Well, the uh, first launch was the space station itself on May 14th, 1973, the very last Saturn V rocket uh, ever to fly. And um, everything seemed to be going well until the, the uh, Skylab reached orbit. And uh, when they started getting uh, telemetry from the station in uh, Houston, they saw that um, several things were problematic. Number one, the power levels on the station were drastically lower than they had expected. And something was wrong with the twin solar panels that were supposed to unfurl from the station and provide the electrical power to the main part of the uh, of the Skylab. Uh, the Apollo telescope mount had its own solar panels, but um, what the problem was was the big ones that were attached to the station itself. Uh, the other thing that was a problem was that the temperature inside Skylab began to rise to um, what would have been very uncomfortable levels had any astronauts been on board. Of course, it was launched unmanned. Uh, and also high enough that people were beginning to worry about the, um, the, the well-being of some of the supplies on board, like uh, medical uh, supplies and things like that, medications and certain foods and, and drugs. Let's um, take a look at what happened and uh, what they had to do to uh, address this problem. Here's the uh, Skylab taking off. Now, the um, Skylab is at the upper end of the Saturn, surrounded by a black and white uh, paneled micrometeoroid shield. But what happened was aerodynamic forces caused the shield to rip off the vehicle, and it took with it one of the two solar panels. As far as the temperatures, it no longer was being insulated by that meteoroid shield. So in Houston, they thought of an idea that the astronauts could deploy a kind of parasol made out of insulating uh, mylar. And here you see the fabrication of that parasol in Houston. And there are managers watching a deployment test. And the other thing the astronauts would do would be to put out a big sun shield in a special spacewalk um, with a pair of... Uh, uh, long poles to steady it. Here's Pete Conrad and his crew in, the crew in front of their Saturn 1B, and here they are lifting off on May 25th with a now a repair mission to save Skylab. They're lifting off that milk stool and heading for space. Now they arrived in space. Here you see their film of the Skylab, and it's uh, just got bare. Uh, metallic surface that's being overheated by the sun. Then they go on board the station and they stick that parasol through a scientific airlock and they open it. And then they draw it down next to the station. And right away, temperatures begin to fall. But that stuck solar panel, the one solar panel that's still left, is, la is uh, held to the side by a strip of debris from that meteoroid shield that tore off. So it can't open and provide electrical power like it should. Well, they devise a cutter, basically a tree cutter, that the astronauts can stick on a pole, like one of these sunshade poles, and use it to cut that strap. And then, if they can do that, they'll attach a line to the stuck solar wing. Pete Conrad will put his shoulder under it and stand up under it, and that way free the stuck solar wing. That was the idea anyway. Well, they got everything ready, and they went outside. Pete Conrad joined by Joe Kerwin. And let's take a look at what happened on that spacewalk. Astronauts Conrad, Astronauts and, Kerwin Conrad and Kerwin made, exit made their exit to, to put operation. the plan into operation. Okay, Houston, we're, okay, out, Houston, we're out there. We, uh, we, uh, we have the debris in sight. There looks like enough room to get the cutter. And uh, I'm just trying to help you stabilize. So uh, they're having some trouble, but eventually they get the strap cut. They uh, put the line out on the solar wing. Pete stands up under it, and lo and behold, the wing comes free. And Conrad and Kerwin go tumbling 
uh, into space. Fortunately, they're both connected by very sturdy umbilicals. And uh, when they can uh, regroup and they look at that solar panel, which is now fully extended, it's a truly beautiful sight. And within a short time after that, the power levels on the station came back to uh, near normal levels. And they uh, had saved Skylab and the mission could continue. Now let's take a look at some scenes from all three Skylab missions of life aboard Skylab. Here's a scene of the Skylab itself with that sun shield parasol. This was uh, taken by the first crew as they departed and you can see this is the condition that they left it in with that one solar wing extended and that sunshade covering the uh, otherwise naked exterior of the Skylab station and keeping those temperatures down. The big um, windmill shaped uh, X is the solar panels extending from the, uh, the, the solar telescope. So let's take a look at this. Here's Skylab drifting over the Earth. Now we're coming into the station. We're going through the multiple docking adapter, which has no specific up or down. It's got all kinds of equipment in it, including the control panel for the solar telescope. Now we're moving through the airlock module. And as we pass through that, we enter the main part of the station called the orbital workshop. The upper deck is a truly cavernous space. Uh, with a huge amount of room to move around in and there's a kind of metal grating that forms the floor down to the lower deck. We come down to the lower deck and we see the wardroom where Joe Kerwin is looking out the window. There in front is the, is the dining room table. Here's Jerry Carr and his crew, the third crew, having a meal. The little food warmer trays. Here's Ed Gibson from the third crew doing a medical experiment to test how he's adapting to uh, weightlessness. Sometimes they would go up and down with a fireman's pole, but most of the time they just floated free, and you can see how much they enjoyed it. Here's the second crew, Bean's crew, having a bit of fun with gymnastics in that huge cavernous upper space. And here is Bean, who was a gymnast in college, doing weightless gymnastics. Now this is not from Skylab, it's from the movie 2001, and of course it was done inside a set, a rotating set, but Pete Conrad actually did this on Skylab 1. There he is. Here's some more scenes from Life Aboard Skylab. This is the first crew. Uh, the upper left you see uh, Joe Kerwin giving Pete Conrad a, a dental, dental exam, uh, and on the lower right Pete Conrad is giving uh, Paul White's a haircut. When you're up there for a month or two, you've got to think about these things. Uh, another medical experiment, this is Owen Garriott from the second crew inside a device called the Lower Body Negative Pressure Experiment. This uh, actually, um, what you do is you zip yourself into this thing and from about the waist down, you uh, experience a reduced air pressure, which tends to make blood pool in your legs and simulates the pull of gravity and tests your uh, your circulatory system and how much it can tolerate this sort of thing after being in weightlessness for a prolonged period. And this was valuable information for uh, doctors and, and medical researchers trying to understand the uh, effects of long-term exposure to, to zero gravity.